Welcome to Token Post Daily News Briefing, where we provide you with the latest and exclusive news on blockchain and cryptocurrency. Our top stories today, Russian officials reiterate that they haven't invested in Bitcoin, South Korea implements blockchain-based evaluation system for public services, and 3.6 million US dollars is allegedly stolen from Kiwi Exchange, Cryptopia. Stay tuned for more. I'm your host, Hun, and this is your Daily News Briefing. The adoption of cryptocurrency in Russia, as well as the Russian government's stance on buying Bitcoin, has created quite a stir as of late. Two days ago, we reported on the possibility that the Russian government might be investing in cryptocurrency. However, it seems the country is not ready just yet to buy Bitcoin. According to Forklock, a Russian local news portal, Elena Sidorenko, the chairperson of an interdepartmental working group on cryptocurrency exchange risk assessment of the Russian state Duma, stated that the Russian Federation is not ready to combine the traditional financial system with cryptocurrencies. In response to the claim that Russia is buying $10 billion worth of Bitcoin, Sidorenko remarked that the claim had no basis, adding that Russia does not have the legal structure in place to allow cryptocurrencies to circulate as legal tender. However, just two days ago, the Financial Markets Committee chairman of the State Duma spoke on the local news outlet RIA Novosti, stating that, to quote, Russia wants to leverage the benefits of blockchain to, pro to provide a digital version of the ruble, adding that a digital ruble may appear in Russia in two or three years. And just yesterday, the Prime Minister spoke at the Gaidar Forum, where he stated that 2018 is not a reason to bury crypto. So, despite Sidorenko's recent comments, it seems that Russia is embracing cryptocurrencies. Yongdung Po, a district in the South Korea capital of Seoul, announced that it plans to implement a new proposal evaluation system based on blockchain technology. According to NewsIS, a local Korean media outlet, the district seeks to apply blockchain technology in the evaluation of public service proposals to boost transparency and trust. Last December, the Public Relations Office of Yongdung Po implemented a blockchain-based pilot program into a number of public service contracts to be reviewed by the Evaluation Committee of the district. The program has already received positive feedback with one member of the committee saying that the technology was top-notch and easy to use. With the pilot program providing to be a success, the district is looking to fully implement the blockchain-based evaluation system in the coming future. PeckShield, a China-based security firm, reported that it has detected yet another two attacks on EOS gambling games. DappShield, the firm's own risk control platform, has been analyzing the possibility for potential hacks on EOS-based gambling games for the past week. Previously, PeckShield reported of attacks on EOS Win, Farm EOS, LuckBet, EOS Dice, and Stack Dice using what is called a transaction congestion attack. To elaborate further on how this attack takes place, when a user bets on a dice gambling game, the player transfers his or her bet to the system and the system confirms it. This process usually takes about 1.5 seconds on the popular EOS game, EOS Win. Once the bet is confirmed, the system generates a random number and determines whether the player wins or not. The transaction congestion attack uses the 1.5 delay time to improve the attacker's winning rates. The attacker deploys several contracts at the same time to determine whether his bets won or not before his last transaction gets processed and predicts the result. On the report published by PeckShield, the attacker of the EOS win improved his winning chances from 20%, the probability of guessing the result of a six-sided cube dice, to about 74%. Peckshield reported that similar methods have been used across multiple EOS-based gambling games. On a separate report published yesterday, the firm stated that exploiting the blockchain layer of the EOS network, such a method could even paralyze the entire EOS network. And operators of EOS gambling games and EOS block producers should take note of the potential transaction congestion attacks in the coming future. Token Post Daily News reported yesterday about the alleged security breach of the Kiwi Exchange, Cryptopia. 
and New Zealand police have confirmed that they are currently working on the case and plan to conduct both a digital forensic investigation of the company as well as a physical scene examination at Cryptopia's office building. However, although Cointelegraph estimates that as much as $3.6 million could have been stolen, they are yet to comment as to the exact amount stolen, saying that a significant amount had only been stolen. Authorities also remarked that they were not able to give a time frame for their ongoing investigation, adding that it was still too early to draw any conclusions. However, in a tweet to Binance CEO Changpeng Zhao, Twitter user Shafta Tangu claimed that the stolen funds had been moved to an account held on Binance. The Binance CEO subsequently had the claim verified and froze the account in question. While stories of such hacks are frustrating in an already volatile market, it is good to see the crypto community coming together to put a stop to bad actors. Bringing you the latest news, I'm your host Hun with the Token Post Daily News Briefing. Thank you for watching.